Hi everyone and welcome to this week's Sunday Night video. This week I am covering the story of Edward Jennings who was the recipient of the Victoria Cross in 1857 and is buried in Preston Cemetery in North Shields. I had originally planned to do this video in the cemetery itself but I decided that it would probably be better to tell this story by doing it as a normal video. I hope you will find it interesting. But before we begin, can I just say, if you do enjoy this video, then please give it a thumbs up. And if you are new here or haven't already done so, then do please consider subscribing to the channel to help support the content we create. Thank you. And I would just like to add that I do record these stories live, so I do sometimes make mistakes, which I always try to rectify, so I hope this does not spoil your enjoyment of the video. Edward Jennings was born in Ballinrobe, I hope I've pronounced that correctly, in County Mayo in Ireland in around 1820. His parents may have been Patrick and Mary, however, the details I found which suggested this also gave Edward a later date of birth, which would throw all of the other dates in the story into dispute, so I can't really say for certain if Patrick and Mary really are his parents. Although I do always like to try and research the family of those who I'm writing about, details aren't always easy to found, find and if I'm not 100% certain about them, I do like to point out when it's just a possibility and not a fact. Although the exact date seems to be unknown, it is said that Edward joined the British Army when he was just a young man. And when he was around 37 years old, he was stationed as a rough rider with the Bengal artillery during the Indian Mutiny and took part in the relief of Lucknow. A rough rider, according to Wikipedia, was an old rank used in the British Army to describe someone who was responsible for training horses and it may have been equivalent to a private. The story goes that in India, while Edward was carrying a message through the city, he heard an English boy voice crying out for help. He immediately went to look in the direction of the voice and, jumping over a wall on his horse, he found himself on a narrow street where he spotted a British lieutenant being attacked by a group of the opposition. The attackers had the lieutenant backed against a wall, unable to escape and in great danger of being killed. Edward rode his horse in the direction of the men and was able to chase them off. He then went back to where he had seen the lieutenant who was wounded and most likely unable to make his way to the medical area of the camp on his own. So Edward placed the wounded man on his horse and carried him to the medical tent. I have to say that in every article and every piece of information I have actually looked at, the British lieutenant has never actually been named unless I've missed his name somewhere. So if anybody does know who he was, what his actual name was, do please let me know in the comments below. So what Edward done was seen as a great act of bravery. After all, he was alone and the men who he chased off could have easily turned and attacked his horse and then Edward himself. And for this great act of bravery, Edward was awarded the prestigious Victoria Cross, as well as 1,000 rupees of reward from the grateful lieutenant. Now, it would seem that two Victoria Crosses were made for Edward. The original medal was sent to India. However, by the time it arrived, Edward had already left the country. And it would have no doubt taken some time for it to be sent from India back to the UK. And Queen Victoria wanted to present the medal to Edward personally, so she had another medal made. Now, this was not the same as the original, as the engraving on it was different. Um, but it would, however, be this medal that Queen Victoria presented to Edward on the 9th of October in 1860. Now, I haven't actually been able to find out for certain if Edward did eventually also receive the original medal, but it seems that the two still exist, which I will discuss a little more later in the video. The details of Edward's life after this are a little bit confusing. Edward possibly went back to Ireland before moving to the North East and setting up home in North Shields. 
I say they are unconfusing, basically, as it seems he married in Ireland, possibly to a lady called Catherine, and the couple would go on to have at least four children, all of whom were born in Ireland. And this is based on the information that was given in the 1881 census. And by 1881, the whole family are living in North Shields. Now, what I don't know is when and why Edward and his family moved to the northeast. But while the family lived in North Shields, it was said that Edward worked as a road sweeper. Now, this on the 1881 census is described as a scavenger. I found this an odd description of a road sweeper as scavenger made me think more of someone who spent their time searching for things like scavenging in bins etc. But it was simply just how road sweepers were known back in 1881. And the family who at one point lived in Bell Street in North Shields were not well off and it is believed that Edward was so much in need of money that at some point, no date is known, he sold his Victoria Cross to a private collector. And as mentioned earlier, there were allegedly two medals assigned to Edward, so which one he sold is not completely clear. In 1889, Edward sadly died and his family fortunes had not improved, so tragically he was buried in a pauper's grave in Preston Cemetery. His death was covered in the local papers at the time, and no doubt this would have included the story of his life and bravery. And just after this, a letter appeared in the local newspaper, which read as follows. Sir, as you have stated yesterday, we have lost from our midst a brave and distinguished soldier in the person of Edward Jennings. Could there not be a volunteer funeral arranged for him? Surely the excellent service he has rendered his country merits full recognition of this kind. Perhaps our worthy Colonel will do all he can to bring this about if it is possible. Yours truly, J. Johnson of Trinity Street in North Shields. What came of this letter is hard to say, but as already mentioned, Edwards was said to have had a pauper's funeral, so it seems that nothing could be done. And it seems incredibly sad to me that someone who had been so brave and received such an honour was then buried in an unmarked grave. In 1950, it was said in a newspaper article that a doctor by the name of James Muirhead, who had previously lived in North Shields, was selling his collection of medals, and he had around 1,700 of them. However, it was said that one medal that he owned would not be sold, and this was the Victoria Cross medal belonging to Edward Jennings. Dr Muirhead had began collecting medals in 1908, so he had obviously not been the person who Edward had sold the medal to originally. So where had it been before this date? It is completely unknown, and it is also unknown where the medal went after this. However, it is said that the original medal is currently owned by the Royal Artillery and is not on public display. Edward's grave remained unmarked for many years until 1997 when his great-granddaughter Kathleen spoke to a campaigner by the name of Philip Pike about his unmarked grave in Preston Cemetery and Philip was shocked to find that he had all but been forgotten and he set about launching a campaign to raise £2,000 which would be needed to erect a proper memorial for Edward. And it was said that the money in June of 1997 was coming in steadily, but more was still needed and an exhibition was due to take place at the Park Hotel in Tynemouth, aimed at telling people the sad story of Edward Jennings and in the hope that this would raise further money for his memorial stone. Thankfully, the campaign was successful and in September of 1997, a memorial service at the graveside took place to dedicate the headstone. And this headstone is the one that you have seen during the course of this video. Now finding the headstone as it is today was not as easy as I first thought, but thankfully a GPS tracker helped to pinpoint it in the somewhat overgrown area of the older part of Preston Cemetery, which is actually obviously being left at the moment for the purpose of the wildlife. But I certainly think it was well worth searching for it to pay my respects to this very brave man. 
To end this story, I have to go back to the information about what we might call the copy medal. In February of 2024, the copy medal was put up for sale by auction in London. The sale estimate was between 20 and 30,000 pounds. However, the medal eventually sold for 55,000 pounds. The identity of the purchaser has obviously not been revealed. And it was due to this sale that I found out the details of the sold medal not being the original and that Edward had had two. Now, I have to assume that the company who sold the medal in February of this year would have fully researched the details and would know what they were selling. So I have to therefore assume that the story of two medals for Edward is true. Now, this makes me wonder which medal it was that he actually sold and did he ever own both medals or was one always kept by the Royal Artillery and the medal that Edward owned was the copy made by Queen Victoria. I would love to know what everyone listening to this story thinks of that idea. Do you think he owned both or just one? Do let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Just to end, I want to say that I am hoping to go back to Preston Cemetery soon to hopefully record a video of some of the more notable people who are buried there. So I might still include a little walk up to Edward's grave in that video too. But for now... I do hope that you have found this short little video interesting and I do thank you all very much for watching and I do hope to see you all again very soon.